Thank, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair, for convening this important hearing. The safety of freight and passenger railroads and the communities that they travel through should be our top priority on this subcommittee. The Norfolk Southern train derailment in East Palestine shocked the nation, but we cannot lose sight that there have been over 1,500 rail incidents since then. In my district in Florida, collisions between cars and trains remain a persistent problem. While technological solutions to improve rail safety exist, it is clear that railroading's overall safety culture has room to improve. My top priority has always been rail safety, and I'm thankful that our chair has made it a priority with this legislation alongside other members of this committee, Representative Moulton, Representative Sykes, and Deluzio. I hope the, informa this, the information from today's hearing will encourage us to mark up this legislation and send a bipartisan rail safety bill to the floor. No transportation accident has a single cause. The NTSB's report on the Norfolk Southern derailment makes it clear that there were many causes of the derailment and the decision to vent and burn vinyl chloride under the mistaken belief and that the tank cars were in imminent danger of exploding. According to the report, 26% of cars that did not derail had reportable defects despite being inspected before departure. I look forward to hearing from our witnesses about what railroading practices need to change to catch defects like these. In the year and a half since the derailment, many media outlets have reported that car men have had less than 90 seconds to inspect a rail car or have been pressured to release cars known to be defective. Fortunately, after the derailment, the train in East Palestine had two crew members and one trainee on board who were able to respond swiftly to the accident and derailment. Thanks to their quick actions, they moved the locomotive away from the fire, preventing additional fires and dangers to the first responders and the surrounding community. If only one person had been on board, they would not have been able to do that so quickly. So I'm glad to see that Chairman Neal's legislation ensures two-person crews. I'm also concerned by the NTSB's findings that despite having bearing detectors placed on an average of every 15 miles prior to the derailment site, the crew did not know that the bearing was in danger of failure before the train derailed in East Palestine. Expanding the use of hot bearing detectors will only improve rail if the detectors are active and the spacing gives sufficient time to stop a faulty train before a catastrophic failure. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for holding this hearing, and I yield back. 